Good morning to my fellow sisters. Good morning. Choir, I beg you, I need you for a few minutes. I beg you, please help your sister. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up. Let's give God the glory. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. It is the word of God. And what better way to enter into his presence than to share with you one or two words of praise. Amen. Amen. Let's give him the glory because there's none like him. He's the Jehovah talking to you. He's the Jehovah master. He's a Jehovah Savior. He's a God for all seasons. He's a God of all flesh. He's a master. He's a creator. He's a savior. He's a deliverer. He's our friend. Bless his holy name. Amen. You are God, you are not Timano. You are God, you are not Timano. Jehovah Jireh, you are God, you are God, you are God, you are not a man, you are God, you are not a man.
thank you so much. The sound of good song and good dancing will never lack in your houses or choir in the name of Jesus. Let's give God the glory, VCC. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise, VCC. Hallelujah. We say glory be to God in the highest. Amen. Glory be to God in the highest. so much to the set man of the house, Pastor, I'm very grateful, Pastor Samuel. I've been given a theme this morning. The theme is how to stay connected to God at all times. How not to sink or slunk into despair. How to remain connected whatever the season. How to never forget that but for God, it would have been a different story. We may not be where we want to be yet, but let us thank God that where we were, we are no longer there. Let's give God the glory because where he has fashioned us and positioned us for, that place where it is, we will eventually land our eventual landing place. Our eventual landing point is taking us there in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. So there you have it. That is my theme. How to remain connected to God at all times. We heard our dear sister read Romans 8, 1 to the end. I could take each and every single of the verse of Romans 8 and just dissect it scientifically, dissect it militarily, dissect it, you know, uh, technologically. I can do, I can stay here for 10 hours going through each and every single one of the verses of um, Romans 8. But um, they say, how do you eat an elephant? And the answer is, you eat an elephant in small, small pieces. In the little, little time that I have today, I'm going to attempt to do justice to the theme as directed by the set man of the house. Amen? Amen. I want to... There was um, a session we had here some time ago, a few weeks ago, on... It was the nine hours with God, sir. Hmm. And um, in that session, my own segment, I chose to deal with soul ties. And um, we brutalized that topic that day. We brutalized it. And certainly, um, things happened. Variables were shifted. We left here better than we came. We give God the glory for that. Hallelujah. On that particular day, I introduced the concept of the soul. And that's how I'm going to also start this session. We are going to move jet speed. I have until 10 past 1. Amen. Amen. Um, when God created man, if we go to the book of Genesis 1, he didn't first create the physical man. You know, God is in three. There are three people in one God. We have God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy. Holy there are not three different types of God. No, there are three different representations of God. Amen. Amen. In the same way that God created himself as a triune God, man has been created as having three parts, three types of man in one body. There's a spirit man, and that was what God created first, Genesis 1. Then there was a physical man when he made man from the dust. But when, he, when these two aspects of man was, were created, spirit man was here. Body man, the carcass, the shell was here. There was no way for the spirit man to interact with the flesh man. There was a need for something in the middle. That thing in the middle is what we call the living soul. It didn't just come from this uh, thin air. The soul is the ownership of God. Why do I say that? 
He said, God breathed into man. Along Missiwa. Laughing Mobashi sorrow, laughing Mobashi Jew, laughing Mobashi Yo. That's why we can talk. That's why we can think. That's why we can we, we can wonder. That's why we can desire. That's why we can open our mouth and say, Oh, I'm hungry. If God did not breathe into us, we would be but mere carcasses. Spirit man would be here. Carcass would be here. So let's thank God for that living soul that he gave to us as his gift. And what happens is, when our time here on earth is done, when we go back to the Father, it's the soul that goes back to him. Your soul never dies. And so, if I ask you, if I were to look, put a price tag on what everybody's wearing today, and in any church on planet earth, were I to look for who was wearing the heaviest watch, the biggest diamond, the biggest gold piece, no matter what value they can attribute it to, it's not worth the price of one one soul. The Bible says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? If I get all the Rolls Royces, all the jets, all the diamonds, all the plutoniums, all the, all, all the precious metals, discovered and undiscovered even, metals we don't even know exist, if I put them on one scale, and then on that scale, if I put your soul or my soul, the news is our soul is still heavier. That is why you need to understand the battle over your soul, the battle over you. That's why the contention is fierce. That's why the contention is fierce. That's why you, you want your, sometimes you pray, you pray, you pray, but it gets harder. You pray, you pray, you pray. But it's been like being under the grip of a boa constrictor. There's a snake called the boa constrictor. How it kills is that it kills by crushing. When it has you and it will never have us, me or anybody here talking in the name of Jesus. But last you mean there was a boa constrictor wrapped around, let's say this was um, um, a human being. The way he would kill is, once you struggle, it winces you, it winces you, it, it squeezes. For any flexion, it squeezes. Flesh, it squeezes. So it kills by crushing. That's why some people pray, 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 pray. There's a poor constrictor, activated spirit assigned against them to make sure that the more they flexion and say, hey, dummy, help me, God, God, they are constricted. It doesn't mean that God is not there. He's there. That is the good news I'm bringing to you today. God created us to look like him in his own image. God created us to have eyes like him, hands like him, legs like him, mouth like him. The hands are what I'm after today. The hands of God are very special. The Bible talks about the right hand of God, his power. The Bible talks about the right arm of God, talks about the holy arm of God. Can we, can someone please turn to Psalm 20 and read me verse 6. Psalm 26, please. I want to bring out a little something from that point. And then we move in jet speed to the point I want to draw out about staying connected to God always. Amen. Amen. Psalm 26, as you read it, the right hand of God will uphold you. Amen. As you read it, the right hand of God, which is power, now, will be your portion. Now I know that the Lord sees anointed. Rewind, please. Start from beginning, ma. Please, loud and clear. Now I know. Now I know. That the Lord saves his anointed. Again? That the Lord saves his anointed. He saves his anointed. Who is his anointed? We. You. Me. Say me. Me. I am an, I am anointed of God. I am an anointed of God. Please, ma. He will answer him from his holy heaven. He will what? Answer me from his holy heaven. So you see, God is not far. He's not at a delicious remove. He's not a them and us. He's there, but he's also with us. Amen. Amen. Let's not forget his name is also Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us. Amen. Amen. Please carry on, man. With the saving strength of his right hand. With the saving strength of his right hand, yes. Some trust in chariots. Yes. And some in horses. Yes. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Uh -huh. They have bowed down and fallen. Yes. For we have risen and mm -hmm. stand upright. Yes. Say, Lord, Lord may let the king, the king answer hear us, us when, when we, we call. call. And that shall be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. The point I'm trying to arrive at is version 6. 
when he says the Lord will hear us with his saving arm. Has the arm got ears? Everybody take a look at your arm. Has it got ears? If somebody appeared here wearing a sleeveless top, all of a sudden they show us their arm. And then we see that arm has ears. Would you run? Would you even remember your guy? <laughs> Those of you that brought children. <laughs> let, let, it's by the grace of God that they won't come from your state that day on your own. Amen? Amen. <laughs> but that's how special the arm of God is. <laughs> the arm of God has ears. With his right hand, with his saving arm. Read it again, my please. Psalm 26. Now I know. Now I know. That the Lord says his anointed. That the Lord says his anointed. He will answer him from his holy heaven. Uh -huh. With the saving strength of his right hand. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God has not left us in the thick of it and done a runner. God has not despised man, regardless of who has failed him in the past. Every single human being is a fresh hope, a fresh expectation unto God. Can somebody please go to Jeremiah 33, 11 for me, I beg you. Jeremiah uh, 33, 11. And on Je Jeremiah 29, 11. The voice, the voice of joy. No, Jeremiah 29, 11. 33, 11. Don't forgive me, 29. 11. I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Amen. Amen. The Lord, uh -huh. thoughts, of peace, thoughts of peace. And not of evil. A what? A what? A what? Let's bless the Lord for that wonderful, Hallelujah. wonderful thing He has in store for us. Thank you, ma'am. Amen. Amen. The plans of God for you shall be to the expected them in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I go to New Living Translation, I like to compare Bible verses because when you do that, the beauty about the scripture jumps out. It says, New Living Translation, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Yeah? Not for me, disaster. Hey! To give you a future and a hope. Receive that future in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive that hope in the name of Jesus. Amen. If I go to English Standard Version, he says that, for I know the plans I have for you, declares, declares the Lord, not just says it, declares it. It's as if he has a microphone in his mouth and says, the plans I have for you. Amen? Amen. For I know the plans I have for you. ESV, English Standard Version, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil. You see that? To give you a future and a hope. Amen. Amen. A new American Standard Bible. Oh, I love this one. I love it. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. We've heard disaster. We've heard uh, not uh, uh, plans for welfare, not for evil. We've heard not for calamity. God is not a man that he would lie. He didn't create you to dump you in it. He doesn't do a runner. He's the ancient of days. The uncreated creator. The Jehovah talking to do. The one who gets to the battle before we get there. I wrote that day. I wrote that day. The one that sends you there but gets there and takes care of the battle before you get there. The one who as you think it, as you contemplate it, he has finished the battle. You are already a completed case in the hand of God. He did not leave you to lie fallow in agriculture. I remember from years in federal government college, my degree in agri science. They say a land that is left to lie fallow is left to lie down there. Nobody cultivates it, nobody plows it, nobody tills it because you want the soil to correct itself back again. Lord did not leave you to lie fallow. All the time, the potter is at work. His hands make his hands shape. That bull, that brutalizing you're going through. As I talk to you, I'm talking to me. The greatest secret of any preacher is when they stand before you. Eh? 